straight to Washington now, where President Trump is signing an executive order approving the Keystone XL pipeline and the Dakota Access pipeline. Let's take a bit of this sound and listen in to our breaking this news. Is with regard to the construction of the Keystone pipeline, something that's been in dispute, and it's subject to a renegotiation of terms by us. We're going to renegotiate some of the terms, and if they'd like, we'll see if we can get that pipeline built. A lot of jobs, 28,000 jobs, great construction jobs. Okay, Keystone Pipeline. This is with respect to the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. Dakota Access Pipeline. Again, subject to terms and conditions to be negotiated by us. Okay. This is construction of pipelines in this country. Uh, we are, and I am, very insistent that if we're going to build pipelines in the United States, the pipe should be made in the United States. So unless there's difficulty with that, because companies are going to have to sort of gear up, much pipeline is bought from other countries. Uh, from now on, we're going to start making pipeline in the United States. We build it in the United States. We build the pipelines. We want to build the pipe. Going to put a lot of workers, a lot of steel workers, back to work. OK. We will build our own pipeline. We will build our own pipes. That's what it has to do with, like we used to in the old days. This is about streamlining the incredibly cumbersome, long, horrible permitting process and reducing regulatory burdens for domestic manufacturing. Uh, many of the people that we've been meeting with over the last long period of time, but yesterday and others, uh, the process is so long and cumbersome that they give up before the end. Sometimes take, it takes many, many years, and we don't want that to happen. And if it's a no, we'll give them a quick no. And if it's a yes, it's like, let's start building. The regulatory process in this country has become a tangled up mess and very unfair to people. That's a big one. This is the expediting of environmental reviews and approvals for high-priority infrastructure projects. We intend to fix our country, our bridges, our roadways. We can't be in an environmental process for 15 years if a bridge is going to be falling down or if a highway is crumbling. So we're expediting environmental reviews and approvals. That's what this is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Press. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, comment to the Standing Rock community, the protesters out there? Thank you, Press. We're good. Thank you. Sometime next week, I'll be making my decision 
this week we'll be announcing. Next week we have outstanding candidates, and we will pick a truly great Supreme Court justice. But I'll be announcing it sometime next week. Okay. Thank you all very much. We have been watching President Trump sign a number of executive orders this morning. There he is with his team, among the most significant for us here in Canada, that he is advancing construction on the Keystone Pipeline as well as Dakota Access. Uh, so there you have President Trump signing an executive action to advance the construction of Keystone XL Pipeline after it was rejected by President Obama back in November of 2015. I want to turn Turn to Ottawa now. Michelle Boyer has been listening and watching along with the rest of us. We heard Michelle, uh, Natural Resources Minister Jim Carr, speaking to reporters in Calgary a few minutes ago, repeating and reiterating Canada's position on this. The Liberals see this as a good thing. It will create jobs. Absolutely. About 2,200 direct jobs, most of those uh, in Alberta. So with the construction of this pipeline, uh, it, it would bring and it will bring a good news to Canada. But of course, uh, and officials, energy officials are, are telling me uh, that this is not a done deal yet. Uh, at this point, it's anticipated that TransCanada will need to reapply, file uh, another application to have the pipeline uh, built through Canada. Uh, so there's still a couple hurdles uh, that need to that need to be overcome uh, this is one step though of course after uh, after president uh, barack obama did uh, deny the uh, did deny the the pipeline back in 2015 so good news for alberta oil of course uh, another opportunity to get its product to market marcia okay uh, i want to play a little bit of sound from donald trump earlier today and come back to you on the other side. I just want to play for everyone what he said this morning. This is when he was meeting with the uh, auto execs. We have friends that uh, want to build in the United States. They go many, many years, and then they can't get their environmental permit over something that nobody ever heard of before. And it's absolutely crazy. And I am, to a large extent, an environmentalist. I believe in it. But it's out of control. And we're going to make a very short process. And we're going to either give you your permits or we're not going to give you your permits, but you're going to know very quickly. So it's not going to be lost on many people, Michelle, that uh, President Trump called himself an environmentalist on the same day that he has approved two of these pipelines. And we both know, as mil mm -hmm. everyone knows, the, this is going to be met with protesters, protests on both sides of the border. Absolutely. And it's interesting to note the, the, the contrast here. Uh, and also, if you compare the United States to Canada about how each values uh, the environment, of course, Justin Trudeau approving pipelines saying, you know, they, they think they've struck that balance between protecting the environment and also uh, and also getting oil to market. Uh, the liberals say, you know, our cars still run on gas, so we still need oil. And Another interesting point of what Donald Trump said, you know, we're going to make this a lot faster. So it begs the question, really, is that by doing this faster, what sort of compromises are going to be made uh, with all the checks and balances for the for the environment? Uh, so I would definitely you hit it right on the head. I definitely expect protests about this. Um, and he, he did call the environmental process I, I, something along the lines of cumbersome uh, as well. So how that will exactly uh, be rolled out, I guess we're going to have to wait and see. But I would imagine that uh, it's, it's another one of Donald Trump's moves to make sure uh, that as much manufacturing remains in uh, the United States as possible. And also interesting to note is how much um, inter, I guess, interbusiness uh, Canada and the U.S. do when it comes to uh, when it comes to building cars. Some parts are made in the United States. Some parts are made in Canada. Some vehicles are assembled in Canada. Others are also assembled in the United States. Will there be a tax? Uh, what kind of tax will there be uh, in the new agreement? You know, Donald Trump has vowed to renegotiate NAFTA, uh, possibly only leaving a bilateral agreement with uh, between the two countries. So what will that look like uh, still remains to be seen. Of course, Donald Trump and Justin Trudeau 
uh, supposed to be meeting within the next 30 days, or that was yesterday, so 29 days now. Uh, so, you know, th those are going to be important conversations uh, that the two leaders of each respective country are going to need to have. President Trump was asked by one of the reporters in the room what he expected to see from protesters. He it appeared as though his staff wanted him to move on. They said, thank you very much. He kind of opened his mouth like he was going to answer the question, but he did not go there. Um, so, Michelle, at this point then, if I'm keeping track, we're waiting for a reaction from Keystone and we're, we're waiting for official reaction from the Liberal government. That's right, and we should expect that reaction out of Calgary today. Of course, the Prime Minister and all the ministers uh, in that city for their retreat. Uh, so uh, we should be expecting that. They have a busy day. Uh, I was on the phone with uh, the, some spokespeople at the, uh, in Ottawa here, and we're told that uh, when time permits, they are going to be making someone available. Also, the Alberta government uh, says that they will be making someone available to react to all of this news a little later today. Well, we should hope so. This is a pretty big headline. All right, uh, Michelle Boyer, thank you so much.